The people came from all over because of Charles. He just made friends so easily. And it was Charles's experience in dealing with his own business that gave him the basis for how to build the friends of the costume collection. It's fun thinking now, while I'm sitting here, of all the people that were in this first group. It really, and they were for all over Columbus. And I can remember Charles to me, he was working so hard on this, and he wouldn't rest. Speaking of Clybacker, here is the man, Charles Clybacker, here at Ohio State University. This, by the way, is the oldest dress here uh, from the 1780s. 1780s. Now, we need to quickly uh, say that you are always looking for donations, because that's where a lot of this comes from. Yes, indeed we are. Uh, so if your audience will remember us that way, we're looking for men's, women's, children's, and accessories. Okay. Uh, and anything that people have, if they would let us have a chance to look, we'd deeply appreciate it. The collection just grew um, through his efforts um, till it numbered. I think by the time he left in 95, it was um, probably about 8,000 pieces. Charles and I were out one night to an event, and we, uh, Marvin Hamlish was performing in Columbus. And he had married a girl from Columbus who was on TV. And Charles and I were out, and we ran into her and her husband at an event. And Charles said, you look absolutely amazing tonight. What are you wearing? Charles said in his inimitable way, of dealing with people. Isn't it time that suit makes its way to the historic costume and textiles collection at Ohio State? And I thought, oh my goodness, what is she gonna say? And she said, fine. I remember my parents were out of town for the winter, and my mother received a letter from some man who wanted to go into the attic of her house and find all these old dresses from women that who uh, might have lived somewhat glamorous lives in Columbus so he could build this historic costume and textile collection. And I think I threw the letter out. But ultimately, I heard about <laughs> Charles from Sally Soder. And Sally said, well, you have to meet Charles and we're organizing this Friends of the Costume Collection at OSU. So he said, well, why don't you come and work with me? And that's when I came down here to work with Charles and it's been crazy ever since then, quite actually. So in 1987, I came back from New York and was a little bit weary. And the next thing I know, I'm getting a call. You need to come to the, to the university immediately. So when I got there, I couldn't believe it. We were wading in water up to our knees. I remember the dispatch ran a picture of me holding a 20s dress that was just disintegrating into my hands. The gelatin sequins, they just kind of disappeared or became gel more gelatinous and just got caught up in the knitting of the dress. The, the gelatin, um, like your jello, when you're making it, dissolves in water. You know, it looks like a little blob, um, and that's where the sequins have just um, become mush. So it was a sad situation. The community, I feel, really did, did get behind us again. I kept getting these uh, telephone calls, and they said, call us, call. I couldn't imagine who are these people, you know, that are calling me. And they kept saying, well, you're so uh, put together, and you're so this, and you're so that. And I said, are they crazy? <laughs> anyway, it came when I got to meet him. And I was so impressed with him, and I said, well, I don't know what I can do for you, but I know my husband would be interested in talking to you. Jerome went, met Charles, met Lena, met the whole group, and he gave the money to build the Geraldine Schottenstein wing. And as I know, there'll never be another Charles Kleibecker, because it's only one of his kind. He's a great guy. He's a lot of laughs. <laughs> So this was the first exhibition I curated. Remember, I had not curated before. And I had the idea of memorable dress Ohio women, really to salute the women of Ohio. In black and white, dressed from the 1920s to today at the Wexner Center for the Arts. Linear Grace, 
1920s, 1930s haute couture. It was in 1989 at our Columbus Museum of Art. Charles is an extraordinary curator, and uh, for many years he worked for us as a special uh, guest curator, and we invited Charles to do an exhibition with, with us. And then when I became director, um, we invited Charles to become our adjunct curator of design so that he could work with us on a regular and steady basis, which he has, which has added just an incredible dimension to what the museum is able to offer because of his talent, uh, because of the fact that he is a beloved treasure in this community. I think it's wonderful that he's at the museum because it, it, he's happy there, I believe, and he's added so much to the museum. I really like this museum, and I'm completing my eighth year here. You can always tell when there is a Kleibacher show underway at the museum. Um, there, uh, Charles has an entire group of people, it's, it's a crew that come in that he likes to work with. You have people who are, you know, ironing and pinning and, and preparing their garments right there. And it's, it's, uh, it's amazing to watch the energy uh, that, and all the work that it takes. There are no boundaries with Charles when you are thinking creatively. There, there are certainly boundaries when you're once the concept is, has been decided and everything falls into place, uh, then, you, then you have to stay disciplined. And he has a very high standard of excellence, which we often refer to as perfection at the museum, but that, that that's what he expects from himself. It's what he expects from his colleagues. It's what he expects from this institution. You could dress in jeans and t-shirts and work for Charles, but you couldn't perform in a, in a sloppy way. Manner. The exhibitions are very tough to produce. We've had meetings where Charles is laying on the floor or on the table because his back has gone out again. And um, I think I've learned that persistence is the way to establish something in life. I support Charles, whatever he does, um, because I really believe in him and I know he does a good job, an excellent job. Whenever we have a Charles exhibition up in the ex at the museum, there's always, you know, everybody holds their breath for what's the next thing that Charles will do, what's the next project, the next idea. I mean, people literally wait with kind of bated breath for the next Charles exhibition. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm going home each night praying that I get this exhibition, which opens next week, <laughs> uh, uh, finished. Uh, if I'm still intact, and people will put up my poor feet and whatever else, and I have a little bit of a break left, I'm ready for the next job.